It is the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Just ahead, we talked to Bob Hester with Flat Out Motors. I had a chance to drive the new 2022 Ram 1500 Limited, and I'll give you my thoughts on it. We'll also have the cruising calendar and later this week in auto history. All that and more just ahead on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world Mars, down there involved in his cell phone and uh, mouth open, all that. <laughs> and then we have King Conrad DeLong right here. Mr. Know-it-all, as we like to refer to him. Over here, we need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Bob Flats. <laughs> Glad you could be with us today. Scruggs and Flats. Scrug, Flat and Scruggs. There you go. Yeah. Matter of fact, there's a, there's a picture that I have that I cherish from the Love Street Light Circus and Feel Good machine oh, yeah. that apparently that when the picture was taken, Flat and Scruggs were playing at the Love Street Light oh, Circus. They were, they were a big part of the Beverly Hillbillies, weren't they? Yes, they were. Yes, they, they were. were. And uh, Hee Haw? When pictures. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find my headset. And you can't find your microphone either. What? Huh? <laughs> Theoretically. Yeah, that too. Theoretically. Yeah. Theoretically. Theoretically. So glad you could join us today for our live show. Last week we had a recorded device that Mr. Mar <laughs> uh, Mars put together for us because um, we weren't here. We weren't here. I was. It was the 4th of July weekend. We didn't have any guests. All of us needed a little break. And so we broke. And um, it was all good. So broke it. We broke it. Um, and that's, and as a matter of fact, we're going to do that again next weekend because I'm going to be out of town. Uh, I'm going to the Corvette invasion in Bastrop, Texas. And, um, mm, Mr. Mars is going to put together a repeat show of what we thought was a great show that we did back on the 18th of June. Is that right? 25th of May. May. What? 25th of May. Well, I just got that all screwed up, didn't I? <laughs> well, it was been it's been a really ugly night for me. Eighteen forty six. It was an it was a late morning. It was a very late morning. You were morning. just getting out of bed when we got here. Usually yeah. you're up early. I know. He was pulling in the drive when I got here. <sighs> it was one of it was one of those evenings that you just can't explain. Um uh, but not uh, legally. Too, too anyway. much tequila. Uh, probably, yes. <laughs> uh, that led to it, yes. That was probably it. But at any rate. Hey, well, you know, it is what it is. It is. All right, so let's move on with the show, shall we? Mm -hmm. Please. So right now, we are going to talk to a fellow by the name of Bob Hester. He's with Flat Out Motors in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Flat Out Autos. Mm-hmm. That's you, what he said. <laughs> let me see here. But, oh, flat Out Autos, yes, you're right. And I, um, my, my apologies. That's twice he's gone back to the notes. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm, and there's going to be a lot of that this morning, I have a feeling. So oh, you warned us. Guess what? I'm just going to shut up and say, here's Bob Hester. And, uh, Bob, it's good to have you with us this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. And my apologies for being me. Good morning. Actually, it's Rob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you one, one tiny correction, but uh, I'll, I'll go by. That's all right. <laughs> well, we've we've had you on before. I think uh, when we had you on the last time, a friend of mine had scouted your K5s out at uh, Houston Intercontinental Airport, and you told us that they were, I believe they were headed to the Mideast somewhere. That's correct. The royal family in Abu Dhabi bought four of them, identical, and uh, they had shipped. We actually transported them to Houston, and they put them on a Turkish air cargo jet from there. And, and ship them and, and stunningly beautiful vehicles. I mean, Thank the, you. the the people who who have a passion for that generation K five of that early seventies K five um, definitely would you know would line up to uh, buy these. But we understand you have uh, something new coming up. We do actually. Uh, after after we built those, we actually last year at SEMA. We want to do something a little different. Everybody talked about, and we had a lot of social media chatter saying that, you know, a K5 can't be four doors. That's a Suburban. So we built 
for SEMA last year, we actually took a four door Tahoe, cut it in half, shortened it eight inches, took the back doors out and then grafted in square body K5 quarter glasses on it. But it was still a fixed roof. Took it to SEMA last year. What we figured out is that we never want to build another one. They were crazy, crazy, crazy uh, difficult to build. So what we ended up doing is building, coming up with the idea of building a brand new version using the uh, kind of the formula that GM did back in the day with the old square bodies. They used a uh, single cab pickup and a short bed and, and made it a unibody with a removable roof. So that's what we started. We actually got with one of our artists, uh, Oscar Var and, uh, down in Texas, and he actually did a rendering for us. And we bought a brand new vehicle, started cutting on it. And we've got all of the, all the metal work is done, all the body work's done. We're roughing the fiberglass shell in right now. So, so you were lucky that uh, GM brought back the regular cab short bed because that was out of production for a couple of years. Actually, no, because I, I would, it would have been awesome if they did, but they only offer it in the little four cylinder. Oh, okay, okay. I cannot get a V8 in it. The only V8 we can get is in a long bed, and with it, we have to shorten the wheelbase, and and we actually use a crew cab short bed as opposed to the just the regular short bed. Okay, the four okay. are much better. So, but uh, I can flip the camera around. I got here in the shop. I can show you the truck if you want. Oh, please do. Absolutely. Well, let me just ask you this. I mean, sure. clearly, clearly to stay in business, you've got to make money. So these things are not cheap. No. No, <laughs> these, what we're trying to do a little different on these. That's one of the other reasons we went this route. Uh, this truck, we, we are looking at a 120 price tag out the door, including the brand new vehicle. But essentially what we do is we've opened up the back of the cab opened up the back of the cab, front of the bed. We regusseted all the plates. The, the bed lined up great with the cab on the structure. We shortened the chassis. It's about 20, 28 inches, I believe. Um, but we reincorporated everything, all of the stock, the stock spare tire molds back up, the stock hitch bolts back up, the bumpers, everything bolts back up. We will probably offer a retro since we've, we've done a lot of that and everybody's kind of gotten you know, we got a name for building those, but if we do, we want to build it on this platform as opposed to the Tahoe platform. The Tahoe platform is a much, much more difficult uh, beast to deal with, with the side curtain airbags, the rear AC, all of those things uh, makes it a lot more difficult. So this is going to look like a, a new truck. That's right. Oh, so the front, got the a front couple, grill, got and a everything. couple of renderings here. I'll show you guys kind of what the what the finished product looks like. But the the front uh, grill and such is going to be looking like a new truck. What you're doing yeah. is the grafting on the back of the K5 Blazer cap, so to speak. That's correct. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we're actually doing, like I said, a full removable shell. We're having to build it from scratch. Obviously, nobody makes one that to fit this truck in this application. So we're having to do something a little different. Now, but, are, are uh, you we do a little bit of everything in our shop? That's kind of what I was telling one to kind of show. This is a, our next SEMA vehicle will be in our booth this fall. This is a 68 international travel all on a setting on a roaster shop chassis with a crate LT4. <laughs> uh, it is, it is an insane build. I mean, the detail underneath is, is crazy. Uh, we were actually going to, the owner of this vehicle is wanted us to fix everything, get the body perfect, and then we're going to patina it. So it'll be a, it'll be a little different build, but it'll be in our booth at SEMA this fall. With shiny rust. No shiny. I, we don't do shiny. <laughs> we don't do shiny. I like not that. Not when it comes, not when it comes to patina. Patina has got to have a very, very little sheen to it. So it's, uh, it's very important for us to make it look realistic and believable. And do and you have your own in-house painters that do this patina, or do you, you yes, sub sir. that out? Yes, sir. We do everything in-house. We actually have all, of our, all the guys from paint, body, fab, metalwork, and uh, there's even a upholstery in-house. He's, he's a separate independent, but he actually is right here in our shop. So oh, how convenient. we have everything, one-stop shop right here in our, 
in our doors. I was going to say, how convenient is that to have a poultry yeah. in the building? It's, it is. The and then this so, little rig here is uh, my daughter, my twelve-year-old daughter, and I did the long haul power tour. Oh my god! This little grown-up go kart. <laughs> so you did that? Was it fourteen hundred miles this year? It was about for us. It's only about a thousand, a little over a thousand mile trip, uh, starting here in uh, Jonesboro. We're only about an hour from Memphis where it started this year. So. And and you did that in an in an open chassis. Yeah. Yes, we didn't. Fortunately, it was no rain, but uh, it was a hundred degrees every day, so it was a uh, it was a challenge to say the least. Oh, but what but a, it was fun! What a memory for you and your daughter to do something like Absolutely. that together. That's something she'll never forget, and and uh, you'll never you'll never forget it as well. So with the the SEMA build is um is your international? Is there a plan to have your um, K five conversion ready for SEMA oh, yes. as well? Yes, we'll, we'll have both of them in our booth, uh, and we're over actually going to be building about twenty five the first year of the new uh, Jimmys. And our next project that we've kind of got in the works, I don't have renderings completed yet, but we're want to kind of go the other way with this. And uh, we're going to do a sport version, two wheel drive lowered with uh, four length rear suspension, all coil over suspension with a supercharger and uh, make a high performance sport version with the two door as well. That'll, that'd be a fun ride. Now with, with, when you talk about putting the four link in, in, um, is that going to also include a new frame to do all of that? Or are you just going to adjust the, existing we're going to use frame? the stock frame. It's, it's a, it's a heavy duty frame. These trucks are built for, for working and for hauling loads. So I think it'll be perfectly fine for what we're doing, but, uh, yeah, they're, there's, there's quite a few companies and we're, we're looking to partner with a few of them on the suspension components so that we could be consistent. Back to your painter. Where did yeah. your painters get the skill sets to do the the patina work like that? Because I know that's I'll not be honest, something... it's it's a uh, it's a lot of uh, trial and error and uh, just trying different things. Uh, one of the we just actually just finished up a build in our shop it was for the same gentleman that owns the international. He's got a '72 Suburban that had just amazing patina on it. I mean, literally no no paint at all left on top of the hood uh but he had a couple areas he wanted to fix that he was just wasn't okay with in the back so we actually made all the repairs and we actually matched up the patina and then clear coated everything one of the things that we we do it's a little different even on the on the truck we'll use different clear we'll use a flat clear and then we'll use an eggshell uh for different areas and blend the two Okay. So you so you don't have shiny rust. Shiny rust is just ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense to me. So. And I see some of those that are the the patinaed vehicles that show up at different meets and stuff, and you can tell they used a a high gloss clear over the top of it. And it's like okay, it, it, it screams fake. <laughs> well, with that, um, getting a chance to look at this suburban that your customer owns probably is a good experience for your painter because it gives him a, I know what it should look like. So making that uh, continuation of that patina on the rest of the suburban will help him yes. quite a bit doing the international. Oh yeah, definitely. So what, uh, what's the plan for the interior of the international? We're doing something a little simple. Uh, it'll have a, a wool carpet, but with the, the seats are pretty simple. They're bench seats. We're not going crazy with it. He wants it to look like it could have been an original interior, but with a little nicer finishes, obviously all other and so forth. But uh, he, he really like he's he's a he's a great client to have. He's got great taste in the builds that he does is, is are just phenomenal. So we're we're very thankful that we've gotten uh, the opportunity to work with him on this. We've got another project coming down the line with him, a, a 70 Cutlass that was uh, kind of a special car for him. It was him, he and his wife. It was their first vehicle. So we're, we're going to be doing a full resto mod on it, full frame off, LT1 crate, everything on that car as well. Make my heart beat fast. I have a uh, 70 model Rally 350 for my toy car. Oh, yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, how cool is that? Yeah, we'll have to have you back on again to show, you know, when you Absolutely. when you got that 70, because they all bust my chops about my Oldsmobile and <laughs> some of the issues I've had yeah. with it. There's no issues. Come no, on. He, he, he is over a year now. He will not, for whatever reason, only he knows, he will not change the ignition switch out so the car doesn't run. I don't car, know why. The car will run. <laughs> Time and effort. Don't, don't, a- anyhow. You it's always it anyhow. <laughs> you brought it up. Yeah, that's right. I know, I know, I know. So, um, <laughs> and it's yellow. <laughs> and it's yellow. And, and it's the yellow. bumpers are yellow, too. Yeah. It's three strings. So, have you followed up with the uh, royal family on uh, on their trucks at all? I'll be honest. I haven't heard a word from them. When, we, when they left our shop, we, we've never seen anything from them. We've never seen any sign. Only the last social media or anything I've seen is where they were loading them on a plane and a couple of people snapped pictures of them. Oh, uh, well. We built a couple more. We actually finished one. We've got a, a yellow one, a yellow seven, uh, 70 model up in uh, New Hampshire for a Chevy dealer up there. It's the ochre yellow. And then we've got a, uh, a GMC Denali that we built over in Memphis that we finished up as well. Those, those are the last two that we built. Cool. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Don, I was. Don, uh, I was. Don was reading. My, yes, my my. Never mind. I, I, I was distracted, and my, and my apologies. Uh, because I mean, I should apologize to you from the very get go because it's not Bob, it's Rob, and flat out autos, and not flat out motors. So clearly, I have had a, a brain malfunction when it comes to everything about. You and your great uh, facility up there in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Are you from Jonesboro? Is that why you're there? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is home. Uh, well, it's good. That's good. And it looks like you've got a beautiful shop there. And uh, and obviously, clearly, you do some incredible work. Um, and I know that we've had you on before, but it's a whole new experience because it's been, what, a year or so? Yeah, it's At been least. a little over a year. Yeah, yeah. a little over a year. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I, I remember... When Mike said, oh, it's the K5 guy, bingo, I remember the K5 <laughs> interview, and uh, we were stunned back then, and clearly you've come a long way in the time that we talked to you last. So uh, congratulations on a job well done. Yeah, Thank I, you. If I remember correctly, when we uh, when we looked at uh, your the original trucks that were out at the airport, I think that was either the same weekend or the weekend before um, – uh, Lone Star Throwdown, the truck show up yeah, in Conroe. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Any plans on maybe attending Lone Star Throwdown with any of your toys? Oh, yeah. Once we get this, the new one done, we've actually got a couple other C10s. I've got a 71 that's here in the shop right now that we, we're just finishing up. It's a 60 LS with a turbo. And then we've got another uh, seven, uh, 72 that we actually uh, did a LS swap on and patina it as well. So we're going to have those couple of those we finished up and be out and about. So and then when the new when the new Jimmy will be out, we'll be making all the shows with it. So do you prefer just a personal preference the GMC versus the Chevy? Because it seems like you do more on the GMC side of things than the Chevy. Didn't, on, didn't know if there was a the reason new, why. On the older. On the older body styles, the old C10s, I'm I'm a Chevrolet guy. I love the love the '72 grill. In my opinion, it's just gorgeous on them. But on the new modern vehicles, I like the GMC. Hmm. Well, great. There you go, Rob. We really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, hey, uh, flat out, flatoutautos.com. I've already posted a link on our Facebook page, and we'll get some more up on some of our other social media for us. You build some stunning looking vehicles, and we hope to have you on again in the future. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. All right. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us here at In Wheel Time Car Talk, shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. Time now for this hour's car review. Had a chance to drive the 2022 Ram 1500. Holy Wipe that smile off your face. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) You know, everybody asks me, so what's your favorite truck? This is it. Um, and I have driven all of the new 22s that they have out on the market today, and um, this by far is my favorite. Available trim levels include the Tradesman, the Tradesman HFE, 
the bighorn, or in Texas we call it the Lone Star, the Rebel, the Limited, the Laramie, the Longhorn, and the TRX. This is a standard half-ton pickup truck. I had the Limited Crew Cab 4x4. It comes in two cabs, shorter long bed, four engine options, ranging from 305 horsepower to 702 horsepower, <laughs> and seats up to six people, def- depending on uh, whether you have a bench seat in the front. In the front. Now, not all of the trim levels offer the bench seat. So oh, you'll do have they to, really? You'll have to. Okay. Not all of them offer the bench oh, seat. Oh, not up, all of them. Yeah, uh, up to six. Most of them are five person vehicles, which is what I would have, the two buckets up front. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was all new in 2019, but there have been many upgrades, and they continue to upgrade it every year. Exterior features, um, it has a well-proportioned exterior. As far as body panels are concerned, everything just works right on this car when it comes to eyesight. Traditional grill that doesn't overpower the front end, which is a real sore spot for me, my own personal opinion. I want everything proportionate. Uh, love the painted hmm. bumpers that is an option on the Lone Star. I know that sounds crazy. Body colored? Body colored bumpers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes it look more car like. And for most of us, we don't use the trucks as trucks. As trucks. We use them as lux- drivers. luxury vehicles. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. Uh, Wheel designs based on the option package. What I liked about it, that Ram box, what a brilliant idea that is. That takes that area from the wheel well and uses it above the wheel well that has access on the sides of the truck that's lockable. And you, They've got all sorts of options. You can put fishing rods in there. They've got a thing that holds fishing rods. You can use it as a cooler, dump the ice in there and all your cold drinks in oh, there. yeah. Uh, great for tailgating. Anyway, and still the only manufacturer that uses that space uh, as as a storage com- uh, compartment. Yes, uh, Ram is the only one that's doing it, and what a, what an advantage I think that gives them. Totally agree. Uh, interior highlights: the best designed interior of all the pickups. Period. Hmm. Uh, upper trims get real leather. That are the, the, the leather is unique to the trim level. Um, it, the, the subtleties in each one of them really depends on the trim level. Like, for instance, if you want to get the, um, the, the ranch look to it, it has its own unique flair. Whatever. <laughs> uh, upper trims get real leather, as I mentioned. Uh, pinstripe motif on the Limited is absolutely the bomb. They carry it through the dash all the way to the floor mats oh, wow. and the trim in the doors. Uh, cargo and trunk room, well, lots of under-seat storage as well as in-floor storage. A great uh, addition on, on these trucks. Uh, lane keep assist stays off with a one-time push of the button. You don't have to constantly, every time you start it, push the button to keep the oh, lane so assist. you can disable it, and it stays disabled even if you do cycle Until you key, press the button Which again. is unusual in the market because most everybody else recycles it. Cowboy approved Laramie Longhorn is the bomb. Get the 12 inch touchscreen. Oh, it makes such a difference. And and I agree with you. I think that the best interior in the market is the Ram. You you've seen all the ones yeah, that I've driven. The, the, the Ram by far, hands and feet above everybody else's interior. The engine that I had was the 5.7 liter V8, which is probably pretty much the most popular engine and the reason being is because of the horsepower and the torque for people that actually use it as a pickup truck horsepower 395 torque 410 transmission an eight-speed automatic tow rating 11,520 pounds haul rating is 2,020 pounds okay Okay. Well, 11,000 pounds and a half ton is pretty significant yeah it, it really is uh miles per gallon 18 city 22 highway for a combined of 19. That's what it's rated. I got 16.8, and that's just the way. That's very good. Not bad. Full-size truck, that's very good. With a Hemi? Yeah. I remember many of the trucks that I've had in the past from different manufacturers get as little as 10, Mm. some of them 13, and that's on the high end. 
This one gets 16.8 from my experience of driving 229.7 miles. What I liked about it, plenty of power. It's ready at the hit of the throttle. E-Torque makes a noticeable difference in smoothness. It's like butter taken off from the line. Uh, Ride and handling, what I liked about it, the independent rear suspension with the air bag uh, lift on it. It doesn't have springs per se. That's my choice. What could use improvement? Nothing. Base trim price sixty two four sixty. Price is tested seventy two four twenty. Base model price you can get in a Ram pickup truck for thirty six six seventy five. Other base prices for other competitors include the Ford F one fifty for thirty eight nine twenty, the Chevy Silverado fifteen hundred for thirty nine five, and the Toyota Tundra for thirty eight thousand dollars. Right, right in the price range market with everybody else. Yep. So, and that's my review of the twenty twenty two Ram. 1500. Thank you for playing. Time now for the cruise in calendar and right. uh, let's do some cruise ins. Let's cruise. So uh, tonight is uh, track casual at Speed Sport uh, in uh, New Caney, Texas. Uh, that's going to be a track event, uh, $150 entry fee. Uh, also tonight is Nifty 50s up in the Woodlands at uh, Buckthorn Place. And uh, entry fee again is 10 bucks to go. Live music. Generally a very good crowd. It's going to be hot. It's going to be hot, and be careful if you're bringing pets and stuff because the your ground is going to be hot. Yeah, you know, so I want to keep everybody careful. Uh, tonight at 5 p.m. down in Pearland at the Crafty Crab on uh, Broadway <laughs> uh, is an open cruise, uh, and they are uh, a- asking for a $20 donation to the Wounded Warriors Project. Uh, Jeep Night at Three Acres uh, Food Truck Park in Santa Fe, Texas. Mm-hmm. And that starts at 5 p.m. and goes to 9.30 p.m. Hot Nights and Cool Tunes in Brenham, Texas, starts at 5 p.m. And uh, that's uh, an open cruise, and it's free. And uh, that's at uh, Douglas Street and Alamo Street in Brenham. In Montgomery, Texas, is the Brookshire Brothers Cruise Inn. Again, starts at 5 p.m., and that's a free cruise inn. And then uh, as we go around the circle here, Wharton Cruise Night is uh, tonight starting at 6 p.m. Uh, in Wharton. Uh, again, that's a free one. And then uh, uh, finally, the Saturday night cruise in at Home Depot at Marina Bay and Clear Lake Shores. Again, another free cruise in. That hot. starts at 5 p.m. Hey, the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show streams on the iHeartRadio app and Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. 30-minute podcasts are available from your favorite podcast provider. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Get out the permanent marker and write on your wall calendar the next Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise In, Saturday, September 17th, 2022. It's the fall edition of Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla in Katy, 8 to 11 a.m. It's the only place cruisers compete for Loopy's Chili Pepper Trophies and other prizes. There's no charge to enter your vehicle for Best Hot Rod, Best Classic, or Best Modern Classic. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's coolest and most unique cruise in and is your opportunity to see the best hot rod, show cars, classics, and resto mods and get Loopy Tortilla Breakfast Tacos with adult beverages. There's no entry fee and cars will automatically compete for those much sought after custom Loopy Trophies and other prizes. It happens at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10. It's Tailpipes and Tacos Fall Edition, Saturday, September 17th. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show will be there, too. Celebrate the beginning of fall and the return of the Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise In, Saturday morning, September 17th, 8 to 11 a.m. We'll see you then, weather permitting. Want to take a minute to tell you about Gulf Coast Auto Shield, a Houston detail company like no other. Gulf Coast Auto Shield offers paint correction services that'll give your car, truck, or SUV a like-new shine. Afterwards, you want to protect it with a professionally installed nano ceramic coating or protection film. Worried about your very expensive windshield getting damaged, broken, or cracked? Let Gulf Coast Auto Shield install ExoShield, a windshield protection film. Give John Gray a call today or check out their website, gcautoshield.com. Hey, whether you own a new, ultra expensive, exotic, or a five year old suburban, Gulf Coast Auto Shield will help keep your investment looking like the day it rolled off the assembly line. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is conveniently located on the South Sam Houston Parkway, just south of I-69, the Southwest Freeway. Meet the staff and check out all of their services online right now at gcautoshield.com. 